Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Welcome to the Daily Futures Market and Crypto Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 9th, the 29th of the month rather. Going on the end of the week and end of the month all lining up on the exact same day. It can be a little bit tricky when those things line up. So we have to play it a little bit safe going into tomorrow's trading with the understanding that it can be a little bit more whippy than normal. So take a little extra precaution going into tomorrow's trading. Now, before we jump on into the charts, as always, make sure to swing it over to Slingshot shopfutures.com scroll down and click on the join the daily outlook newsletter that's where you're going to be able to sign your email up on our email list so you'll be notified every time one of our videos comes out along with that in the newsletter itself we talk about different stocks different options cryptos futures you name it if it moves it'll show up in there at some point and it's a great newsletter to get your hands on if you haven't already next up if you haven't done so already also make sure to click on the live trade room subscription and trial info and from there you can sign up for a three-day trial in the live trade room now the three-day trial is a great way that you can sit down with us for a couple days and see what we're all about you can hang out with us in the live trade room you can see our screens see the trades that we're looking at taking see our breakdown and analysis of the markets for the morning session for the next couple days and overall it's just a really good way to see inside what we're doing every day so if you haven't done so already make sure to sign up for that trial now, looking across the board here, we have a lot of good movement, in all honesty. The euro uh, started off with an attempted bear trend to the downside, didn't get a whole lot done. Uh, we can see they really did try to wedge out a little bit, but for the most part, at around 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock on that retest, they never really looked back. We had a big rotation back to the upside, and the buyers took full control, and the sellers, if they are still stuck in it, are not feeling very good. The overall sentiment is obviously to the upside, and we are breaking above monthly resistance. Now it's support at 18.225. We have major support for monthly uh, for the monthly side of things a little further down at 17.865 as well. But when we're going into the end of the month, especially the end of the month and end of the week stacked up on one another, these levels become bigger and bigger and bigger. So this 18.225 has a very big chance of showing us a lot of support coming in uh, for well, really the next couple days, and since tomorrow's the last trading day, well, probably just tomorrow. Uh, but overall, you know, along with that, we do have major support coming in at 18,255, 18,225, and 18,170. This whole zone inside of here is going to be a big, big buying area. The first time we came into that after we broke away, they respected it very well, and I'm anticipating the same thing. So if we can get the market on the euro to drop down into that zone once again, especially towards the lower edge for a slight sale on prices, I'd be looking for buying pressure back up towards those highs. So the euro, pretty straightforward. They're taking a look at crude oil, or gold rather. Uh, we have a bull ascending wedge working its way up for most of the day. Kind of the same situation as the euro, where we went sideways to start the day off into a dip lower. From that dip lower, we've rotated all the way back up and we've made a new high. So a little bit of a cyclical nature here as well. New high into a new low into a new high. Eventually, that may mean that we cycle down to a new low. And the same could be said for the euro as well. We are in a cyclical type day uh, and type of movement, it wouldn't be a surprise to see them cycle back. But for right now, as long as the buyers are maintaining this bull ascending wedge and support is below us, we have every reason to believe the buyers are still going to try to maintain this price. A little bit of a different story here on gold, though. We have weekly resistance. Remember, this is the end of the week, so these weekly levels of resistance act a little bit stronger than they normally would, and that's at 1291.2. Uh, I, really, that just tells us that I, I'm not a big fan of buying so close to that area of resistance. I would rather be looking to buy areas of support underneath us, and especially if you can get them to line up with one another, that would be even better. Now, the reason I say that is we have major support coming through here at 88.5. But if the market can stall for a little while, we may have a quick little dip to where we have horizontal support and the bottom of the ascending wedge coming all into the exact same place. And just eyeballing it here, if we look at this most recent swing low to high, that is around 50% as well. Uh, so you have multiple levels stacking up in the same place, leading for a potential buy bounce back up to attempt those highs. Only if it can stall for a little while longer. Uh, if it does start seeing a little bit of failure and cracks through that area, then we're looking to use that as resistance down to the next support zone at 85.2 so we have a couple different trading options here on gold it's just a matter of what the market wants to give us uh, in terms of trading opportunity over on crude oil 
Oh, man, what a rotation on Crude. We did mostly nothing for the entirety of the AM session in yesterday afternoon. Uh, we had a quick snap higher towards eh, 4 or 5 o'clock or so, and then after that snap up, they failed to make the next new high and collapsed all the way down to a low. Major, major support off of the high to the low. We have a deviation measurement at 51.24 that is acting very strongly as support. And with that 51.24 in the way, we do have one more objective to the downside at 50.87. Now, notably, again, we are going into the end of the week and we have last week's high right there at 51.11. And that is kind of giving us a gravitational pull, a slight magnetism to draw the market back down once again to not only retest 51.24, but also potentially break down and finish off some of these other objectives. So I am still short biased for now, but likely only for one more leg. We have a big breakdown. It's likely they give it one more shot, kind of like what we saw back here, big rally up they tried to get the second leg in this case it failed and collapsed if we get the same thing if they fail then you expect them to rotate back to the highs but until we see that failure i'm looking for the short side and looking for them to complete the rotation back down to 5124 5111 and final objectives down to 5087 if they can really give you a good run so crude is looking pretty heavy just a matter of whether or not they can continue that cycle down for one more push that's really all i'm looking for and then finally on the S&P, we have the S&P in, well, doing mostly what the S&P does best, which is going range bound in a lot of chop and slop. We started the day off with a slight gap down, went range bound. So from a new low into a new high, into a new low, and now into a new high. The difference here is that even though we do have a range and we may end up cycling back down to the lows like we've talked about in a lot of the other markets, this is going along with the much larger trend. The much larger trend is pointing up, right? We have a very uh, moderate uh, type of bull trend grinding its way higher, uh, arguably even a, a, a little bit of a wedge. But the way that things are lining up, every time the market has had a quick dip lower on the S&P, it has been snapped right back up again. And it usually leads to another breakout to the upside. And that's kind of what we have here. We have another snap to the downside. Very likely this leads into a breakout above the highs. So I am looking for longs in the short term, uh, likely into the overnight session. And you know how the S&P goes. If it's slow enough, it might go into tomorrow's morning session. But I'm looking for them to push back up towards 2509 and a quarter and potentially break out to 2510. Uh, now, in terms of areas to enter or areas of interest to look for, uh, we are very, very high in the move. I don't necessarily want to be a buyer right now at 2508. That is an area of resistance. And not to mention, we have last week's high at seven and a quarter. So what I would rather see is the market maybe make a double top, pull back and then find buying support at three and a half. Uh, if they really want to be nice all the way down to one or 99 and a quarter, of course, 2,500 still serpentining its way through price. But the location that we're in right now is just a little too expensive. If anything, you know, if you are really aggressive, maybe finding some buy support at around five and a quarter would be the earliest, but I would really like to see that three and a half to jump on in here for the S and P. So that's going to do it for the outlook. Now, taking a look at tomorrow's news, we do have a couple things to uh, to work with on the news, but not any U.S. news, right? Tomorrow morning at 3.55, we have the German unemployment change. At 4.30, we have the GDP for the U.K., also at 4.30, we have the GDP again for the UK. One of them is year over year. The other is quarter over quarter, both for quarter two. At 5 o'clock out of the Eurozone, we have the CPI year over year for September. At 8.30 in the US session, we have Canadian news, the GDP. At 10.15, we, out of the Eurozone, we have ECB President Draghi speaking, which will be a mover. We don't have any US news tomorrow. So given that fact, it, the only thing that we really have to worry about tomorrow is maybe some slight Canadian news at 8.30. And 10.15 with Draghi on the microphone is not a time frame that I would like to be uh, looking for trades. And then a little bit after that at 10.45, we have the Bank of England Governor Carney speaking. So no U.S. news tomorrow. Uh, there is a bunch of small you know, news announcements, medium news announcements, but no big ones for tomorrow at this point in time. So that leaves us with end of the month end of the week and no new uh, US news coming out all in the same day yeah, might be a little bit again we're going to need to go into tomorrow with a little bit of extra caution on the table now, taking a look at the cryptocurrency side of things, starting off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still rallying to the upside, but we are getting a little bit of a pullback and testing the channel highs. Now, the channel highs that we're testing, this is an area where buyers will likely begin to scale in. And if we zoom, we can see this makes 
a decent amount of sense. We have a little bit of a floor that was put in between that micro double bottom. We have the previous swing high that we completely left behind. We have the moving averages and the channel top all coming into the same place. Buyers will likely begin buying in here looking for a rally to a new high. And I can't necessarily say I blame them, but for me, you know me, you've heard me say it several times before, I like getting some better prices. I don't wanna buy at a premium, I wanna buy it when it's on sale. I don't believe that this is on sale at this point in time. What I would like to see is a little bit more of a pullback on Bitcoin. We're still floating around that 4,200. They haven't broken above 4,300. And as long as that remains the case, we are looking at this as a bull channel that got a little overzealous on the highs and that could easily equalize itself on the bottom. And that may mean that we may have a pullback back to 4,000, which is what I would love to see, but we may get a little bit more out of that pullback down to around 3,850 as well. So you gotta be a little bit prepared. There might be a deeper pullback coming on Bitcoin uh, in the next coming days, maybe even over the weekend, but we are in an area of short-term buying pressure that will likely see an attempted lift to the upside. Over on Bitcoin Cash, they've already had that lift to the upside. We had a very quick snap down to the lows, major support that we were talking about, well, we've been talking about for quite a while now, that did end up holding and rocketed the market straight back up again. Beautiful bounce off of that area that gave you around 440, 450 for a buy zone all the way back up and made a peak of 483. So really, really nice bounce out of that location. Now it's just a matter of what do they want to do now that they're pulling back? Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash tend to kind of flow together and Bitcoin really didn't have that snap pullback into a big rally higher and now it looks like Bitcoin Cash is kind of neutralizing that big rocket to the upside back down. That gives us a little bit of a clue that we may be looking for a slightly deeper pullback here. We'd never really trapped underneath these lows, which is what I would love to see. I would love to see the market get down, trap underneath those lows below 440, maybe down to 430 even, to find some buying pressure from there to push the market back up. Again, it follows along with... Uh, in close proximity to what Bitcoin is doing, where we're looking for that deeper correction, the same can be said for Bitcoin Cash. I'm looking for that deeper correction. Uh, if you want to split the difference, 435 looks to be about the best spot, really next up, uh, if they want to continue this drive lower on uh, on BCC. Over on Dash, we are still range bound. There's not really much to add here. It does look like we have a, a couple different ranges to work with, and really the major buy area is from 309 up to 316. Until we push down into that location, really not much else we can do on Dash, and we might just have to put it on the side burner until we get down there. Uh, but for right now, very, very range bound sideways, not much going on there. On Ethereum, we're floating around the 300 level. We had that nice push to the upside, forming a new wedge top, and we are now resting on the bottom of the wedge. I don't think the bottom of the wedge is going to be good enough, not the way that this looks at the moment. You may find some preliminary buyers that are buying off of the wedge bottom. You can see they've already tried to come in uh, on that initial bounce, but I'm looking for some slightly better prices in that I want them to come back to the earlier area of congestion before the breakout above 300. We have this earlier kind of small range that was put in uh, from we'll say 296 down to 289 or so uh, that the market found a little bit of a balance of. They coiled the spring up and then they let the spring go. A lot of times when you have a range that breaks out like that, you anticipate them coming back for a retest. And that's really what I would be looking for next up. Now, if I can get optimal pricing, uh, you know, pushing down towards around 288, 289 would be phenomenal for potential buying pressure to mark the uh, or to pop the market back up again. If they want to dip a little bit further below that, then we have the big one, the one that I think a lot of people are waiting for around 280 down to 275. This whole zone right here is really where the pause happened after that after the reversal off the bottom. Once they reversed off of the lows, they paused here for a little while, they put in a little bit of a floor, and that floor, if the market can come back and retest it, is going to be a big deal. Uh, so that's kind of the, the hot spot that I'm looking for. We may not be able to pull back that far, so just in case we have the preliminary one at around 489 down to 485. 289 to 285 rather. Uh, looking at Litecoin, we are also pulling back here. Litecoin uh, is still kind of the same story. We're a little overzealous at the top of the channels. There's a couple different ways you can draw the channels up, but I think Litecoin needs a pullback before it can really start taking off. I love the way that Litecoin is looking, but it's just way too expensive up here. Uh, I think we're much better off waiting for a deeper drop down from 51 to 50. That is going to be the hot spot for buyers to jump on in and shove the market back up towards the highs. And from there, we may never come back to the $50 mark. We may rally all the way back up to 100 again. 
But for now, on Litecoin, I think we're a little too expensive. I, we need to see that pullback before I can really get that interested. I'm sure there's going to be some short-term buyers that are looking to try to jump in here, especially around this little floor that was put in around 53.92. Uh, but if that starts breaking down the next major area, 51 down to 50. NEO showing a beautiful bounce off of the buy zone we were talking about yesterday. They pushed down and tapped not only the moving average, but also those previous swing highs. And again, like we were saying yesterday, eyeballing this move from uh, from really low to overall high, we're looking at about a 38.2 and using the intermediary highs, it's about a 50%. So a lot of things stacking up at the same place and it worked out beautifully. Uh, they gave us a bounce off of the low side at around 2750 all the way up to a high of 31.12 before starting to pause a little bit here. I don't think this rally is done. Uh, the one thing that we need to see NEO do is break out of this small little flag that we're forming. And if we can really get some legs above this, the next pullback is going to be a hot buy zone back towards the highs. And that may finish the job up to the $40 mark. And then from there, it's kind of up in the air. Does NEO follow Ethereum up to 400 or do we just kind of hang out, maybe find a top at around 100 like we did on Litecoin? Either way, though, I think the short term future going in towards the end of the year is still really, really bright on NEO. As long as China doesn't mess anything up any more than, uh, than the damage they've already done, uh, I think NEO has a really good shot at pushing towards 100 by the end of the year. Gas, of course, following along with NEO, gas is what NEO uses for transactions, uh, is actually not following along with NEO. We have a little bit of a correlative type of move in that we are in an area, arguably, I mean, you could really drive this whole thing out to the previous major swings. This whole zone is going to be a major buying area uh, of interest, this entire location. And the main reason behind that is actually twofold. We have NEO, which is still continuing to push highs. They're kind of pulling back a little bit. But gas, which typically follows Neo hasn't followed it. We haven't seen gas lift up along with price, and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, that could be a precursor to Neo pulling back still, or it could just mean that gas is on sale right now before a nice lift towards the upside. I'm more on the side of gas is on sale, and I'm looking to jump on in with gas for a rally back towards the highs, at least back up towards around uh, the 67,000 mark. Over on OMG, we have a nice rally to the upside that did overexert itself on the highs. They, they pushed a little too hard too fast. I'm looking for this to pull back to an area of interest below at around the $9.60 mark down to $9.40. Uh, I think that zone inside of there is going to be a nice area for potential support, not to mention the channel lows, major buying zone, moving averages are going to be starting to come inside there. There's a lot of reasons to like that $9.40 to $9.60 area, not to mention, of course, the big round number at 10 uh, floating right inside of there as well. So right now, not really much we can do other than wait uh, on OMG. But if we do get that pullback, 960 to 940 is going to be that hot spot. And then we have EMC squared. That's Einsteinium, one of my favorite markets just because of the name. Uh, looking for a pullback down towards around that 3000 mark. If we can go a little bit further down, 2950s down to 2900s are going to be a really nice area to look for a quick bounce back up. We have an expanding megaphone. Uh, and if they want to pull down in the next, I would say, two hours or so, that should line up really well with not only the bottom of the expanding megaphone, but also those previous swings. And along with the moving averages, are probably going to be kind of in between there. Those aren't going to have much of an impact. But from the low to the high, that is about 50% as well. So a lot of things stacking up around that 3,000 level for at least the short-term burst. Probably a good chance at a uh, you know a, a four to five percent rise off of that uh, if they can get a bounce. So that's taking a look at the outlook overall. There's plenty of stuff to look forward to going into tomorrow's trading. Of course, there are a couple concerns as well. Like we were saying earlier, we have not only the end of the week, but we also have the end of the month. And that is also the end of September, third quarter, find uh, the, the fun stuff in terms of that. And we don't have any U.S. news going into tomorrow's trading session either. So like we always say, it doesn't matter what market you're approaching, make a plan, trade that plan, follow the rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all then.